Okay, let's talk about uh, a particular algebra skill that you need to know to really be able to pass algebra. So when I say 100% must know uh, this skill in order to pass, I'm really not exaggerating. So uh, for example, let's take a look at this problem right here. And if I asked you to simplify this fraction, so uh, this is a fraction, technically you would call this a rational uh, expression, but uh, just imagine you say, hey, like simplify this fraction. So that's effectively, um, I'm asking you to basically do this problem, but just with algebra. So if I gave you a fraction 30 over 50, and I told you to simplify that, you'd be like, oh yeah, okay, I could do that. That's three fifths. And you would be correct, and you would get a nice happy face, an A plus, and maybe a few stars. But that was the good old days of like, you know, third or fourth grade. Now we're dealing with algebra. In order to simplify this, which is effectively doing this, you need to be able to have great uh, skills in this particular area. And what I've found is that a lot of students struggle with this. And if they correct, if they get really good at this uh, category, this kind of subset of algebra, everything will go much, much better for them. So I'm going to get into what this is. And I'm going to give you some uh, specific um, advice on how to improve in this really extremely important vital algebra skill. So we're going to get to this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Now, of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here literally in about a week. So if you're into advanced math, you might want to check out uh, that course. Uh, but I also do uh, many, many um, or have many, many courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for like the GED, high set task, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACCUPLACER, CLEP exam, ALEX exam, maybe a teacher certification exam like the CBEST or Praxis. Uh, there's a ton of exams that people have to take for all kinds of uh, reasons, okay? It's not just school. Maybe you're getting into a program. Maybe you're trying to get a certification uh, for whatever the case might be. But all these exams have one thing in common. That is math. And if you don't do well in the math section, you do not do well on the exam. So I can help you out uh, prepare, uh, to prepare to be successful on these uh, exams. Just go to my website and uh, check out my full course catalog. If I don't have your exam, okay, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with homeschooling. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning system. And then um, obviously help those of you who are having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you truly are serious about wanting to improve in math, okay, now if you're not serious, then just disregard this. But if you are serious and you're watching this video, you know, you're probably interested in getting better at math or learning math. But if you are a student, you got to be serious about uh, taking notes. Now, I've been teaching math for decades, and there's one thing I can always point to with consistency, and that is those students who uh, take great math notes almost always end up looking like this at the end of the school year. And the reverse is true. Those students who kind of blow things off, kind of like how I did back in the good old 1980s. I wasn't a great student. I definitely wasn't focused, and I was trying to cut corners every which way. I was taking notes, but they had nothing to do with math. They were like back and forth. Hey, what are we doing this weekend? And we're doing this, da, 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 because we didn't have any cell phones. If I had a cell phone back in those days, I don't even think I would have graduated. So you got to really focus on uh, being focused. That requires work and discipline. But if you can remain focused and engaged and write that information down, don't, I'm telling you right now, so many out there think that you can just look at the teacher teaching without writing things down. That's not going to be good enough. You have to physically write things down on your paper, neat, organized, detailed. That's going to pay off big time. Okay. Now, as you're improving in your notes, uh, you can use my notes uh, to study from. So those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, now let's get to this problem. If you think you can do this problem and simplify it, uh, go ahead and do so. I mean, this is not, um, let's just say, there's many, many other type of more challenging problems. This is actually pretty easy to do. But if you can do this, if you want to just challenge yourself real quick, go ahead and, you know, pause the video and do the problem because I'm going to do this here in just one second. But let's get to what I'm talking about. And there it is. I'm talking about factoring, okay? 
So many students uh, are not as strong um, in factoring as they sh uh, really um, can be or need to be, okay? If there is one skill that in, in algebra that I would say, and there's so many different skills that are important, but I would have to rank this up here, maybe like the, the number one top skill for you to go and invest in that will make your life easier. Now, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about factoring with the greatest common factor, okay? So things like this, can you factor something like that? Now, what does that uh, mean? Well, it means to take out the greatest common factor, right? This is an illustration of factoring, okay? So you always start off with uh, learning how to factor with the greatest common factor, and then you get into working with trinomials and stuff like this, x squared minus uh, 1x plus 2. This right here, I don't even think is a... Uh, uh, factable, is it factable? Here, let's just do this real quick. Uh, two factors of two that add up to negative one. Nope, it's not factable, okay? So uh, anyways, you start off uh, learning about uh, trinomials and then you get into, this is the basic trinomial, then you get into things like this, all right? Uh, so you're, what we're trying to do is to determine whether these things are factable. So let's take an example of a number is the, this number 10, uh, can you factor this number 10? Well, yes, it's two times five. It's not a prime number. Can I factor seven? No, well, I can only factor with one. So this is the definition of prime. So not everything's factable. So we have all types of things in uh, algebra that we can't factor, but we don't know that until we really try to factor uh, what we're dealing with. So dealing with trinomials is huge, okay? But you have to first start off by mastering uh, the greatest common factor. And then after you've done all this, then you get into special uh, factoring rules. Special, special, let me see here, make sure I can spell that right. So this uh, would be like x squared minus four, and that's equal to what? x plus two times x minus two, difference of two squares. There's all types of other, um, well, not all types, and there's group factoring. So factoring's a huge, huge skill. You need factoring to do a wide variety of problems in algebra and to learn a wide variety of topics. If you cannot factor, you're literally not going to be able to do a ton of uh, the chapters in algebra, and that's probably going to result in you not passing. So I'm not really exaggerating when I'm talking about this. And what I've seen over the years is students kind of know a little bit of factoring, but they struggle. They never really picked it up. So let me give you some quick suggestions on how you can improve uh, in factoring. Uh, first, okay, I have tons of videos on factoring in my YouTube channel in my algebra and pre-algebra playlist, okay? So that's the first thing uh, on various different um, factoring uh, topics. Um, also, you might want to consider checking out my, my Algebra 1 course where I teach this extensively. But I would always start here with the greatest common factor. Make sure you understand how to do the greatest uh, factor out the greatest common factor. So this is the reverse of doing the distributive property. So if I have like four times two y plus one, make sure you can multiply properly here. A lot of students uh, mess up the distributive property. This is eight y plus four. Okay. Now what I've seen over the years, a lot of students when they don't understand this enough, they'll go, oh, this is eight y plus one. They forget to multiply over here. So when you're um, uh, looking to improve with the greatest common factor, make sure you understand the distributive property really well because factoring is the reverse of doing multiplication. So start here, okay? Make sure you're really, really good with this and then start with these easy trinomials where the coefficient of the x squared uh, or a squared, whatever it might be, is one. Master these and then move on to these and then finally uh, go to, into uh, special factoring rules and then learn uh, more about group factoring. But you got to know all of this stuff. And um, again, this is absolutely uh, one of these things that if you don't know it, you can, literally cannot do the problems. Okay, And there's a ton of problems uh, in algebra that require uh, factoring skills. So anyways, hopefully this has kind of set up some sort of game plan for wherever you might be. But this is definitely worth your uh, review. Okay, just validate that you're super strong in factoring. If you are, uh, things are going to go pretty smooth. But now let's get into this problem right here. So let's simplify this. Now, I could have done a lot of, there's a ton of different factoring problems I could do, but I'm only going to do this particular one. So 
let's go ahead and do it. Now, um, again, if you don't want to see the solution, okay, qu quite yet, and you want to try it on your own, then pause the video and do so. But let me go ahead and do this now. So uh, to factor, well, let's just do this real quick. Remember when we had 30 over 50? So I said, oh, yeah, this is three-fifths. But really what you're technically doing there is you're, you're, you're factoring. You're going, oh, that's not three times 10, and this is five times 10. Now, a lot of you are like, I can cross-cancel the zeros, but really what you're doing is you're factoring, and then you're getting these common factors. Okay, this is a factor, and this is a factor, and we have this fraction, so I could cross-cancel common factors, and this is what remains. So tech, that's the technical mechanics of what's going on when you're simplifying, but we need to understand that because this is what we need to do here. So if I can factor and then go look for common factors, I can cross-cancel them. All right, so let's take this guy right here. This is an example of factoring with the greatest common factor. I can factor out a what? I can factor out a four. All right, so this would be four times two X minus one. Now, just to double check myself, the four is the greatest common factor. If I multiply back in four times two X, I get my eight X back and then four times this one, I get my four back. So if you're ever in doubt, in terms of whether you factor something correctly, all you have to do is just look at your factors and, and then just do a quick multiplication again and make sure you can get back to what you started off with, all right? Okay, now, how about this guy? Well, some of you are like, well, there's no greatest common factor. I can't do anything like that. Wrong. This is a uh, difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared. This is a special factoring rule. And I don't want to turn this into a whole lesson on factoring because it's a huge topic. Okay, but this is basically the rule that you need to know. So this 4x squared, I can think of that as 2x squared because 2x times 2x is indeed 4x squared. And then 1, okay, is what? Well, well that's just 1 squared. Okay, so I can think of this 1 as 1 squared. Now I could just follow the pattern. So this thing is going to be equal to 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. And if you weren't sure about that, you can use the FOIL method to go ahead and multiply. Okay, I'm not going to do it here, but I can multiply all this together and I would get back to 4x squared minus 1. Okay, so now that I uh, was able to factor out both the numerator and denominator, completely. Now I'm going to go look to see, hey, do I have any common factors? I'm like, oh, I got a 2x minus 1. Oh, look, I got another 2x minus 1 down here. These are factors, so I can go ahead and do this. And so I'm left with, this is my final answer, 4 over 2x plus 1. Okay, now if you got this answer correct, then I must give you an awesome happy face with a 1986 uh, special mohawk with extra hairspray. Um, I don't know what it was about the 1980s, but we were crazy with the hairspray. And um, yeah, I'm glad that uh, it's not around because it was <laughs> probably not the safest hairstyles to have. But anyways, you definitely earned yourself an A plus and a 100%. So very, very good. Uh, now, I will say that this was a pretty easy problem, okay? When in, ter in terms of factoring, there's much more uh, difficult problems dealing with trinomials and everything else. but it shows me that you're on the right track, okay? Uh, but again, all right, what you wanna do is really take an assessment of your current factoring skill sets and be like, all right, do, is there anything I'm missing here? Because if you strengthen this skill, this is a critical skill, and it's not only just an algebra one. If you have any intentions, I don't know where you're at in uh, your math courses, but uh, this stuff is just going to continue on. So whether you're taking Algebra 1 or Pre-Algebra, let's just back it up here. Pre-Algebra goes to Algebra 1. You start learning a little bit of factoring. Algebra 1, factoring, geometry. You use Algebra in. Algebra 2, tons of factoring. Move on to Pre-Calculus, massive amounts of factoring. So, you know, uh, it's never going to go away. Okay, so, uh, you know, anyways, hopefully I made my point about factoring. I don't want to uh, sound redundant like the, you know, extra, extra, extra redundant, but I know that's what, the way I'm sounding like a broken record, but it's that important, okay? So if you want to end up looking like this in your algebra course, master factoring. All right, so if this video was helpful in some small, tiny little degree, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely, uh, definitely helps me out. 
And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus uh, math videos uh, ranging from basic to advanced math on my channel, all there for you. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all these videos and all the new stuff that I will be doing in the future. But uh, my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.